2010 was a much simpler time. Christopher Nolan was still batting a thousand. The covert implementation of martial law in Texas was still just a twinkle in Obama's eye, and a bright-eyed young Thomas Smith was just cracking open the KJV to set out on a journey that he began regretting immediately. Thomas's struggle through the perpetual doldrums of the Bible are documented on his podcast, Thomas and the Bible, which reached an important milestone this month. After more than five years of begats, shouts, and is it not written in the annals of the kings of Judas, he's finally made it through the Old Testament and into the less circumcised parts of the Bible. And in celebration of that fact, he rejoins us tonight. Thomas, welcome back. Hi, hi. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How about yourself? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So I, I guess the important question after you're now through the Old Testament is what would be the worst thing that you'd be willing to stick your dick into to avoid reading the Old Testament again? <laughs> uh, probably like a priest's mouth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to go with it on theme. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's that bad. And um, there's another big milestone. You talked about, you know, milestone of, of finishing the Old Testament. I had a big milestone last episode it was, let's see if I get this right. It was one episode without wanting to kill myself. So it was like a big milestone. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, no, you know how those, you have those signs that like, you know, days until last accident or, <laughs> you know, or days since last accident. I have that and it was at one, which is a good, it's days pretty good. Days since last suicide contemplation. So that, exactly. that, was the, that was the wrap up episode you did where you weren't actually reading any Bible? Exactly. So I guess technically it would be, it would be two. I don't know. Either way, it's a record, whatever it is, <laughs> whether it be one or two, it's a new record since wanting to blow my head off. So it's, it's pretty that was a big milestone. I just want to make sure you got that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's something to celebrate. So, okay, let's fire up the DeLorean here. We're going to send you back to the day before you started this project and let you talk to yourself. What advice would you give to 2010 Thomas? Um, Other than to avoid that, uh, that Norwegian prostitute. <laughs> I would say buy stock in Scathing Atheist Incorporated. That would be the one, the one major thing that I would do. Always it would make good sense. advice. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't make sense at the time, but uh but you know, it would it would be like one of those prophecies yeah. in the Old Testament that supposedly means all this shit <laughs> when, once it gets to the New Testament, like all I'd have to say is trust me. There will be something called scathing atheist and you know, you want to buy some stock in that if there's any sort of, you know, initial public offering. And and the fact that there hasn't been makes it all that much more like an Old Testament prophecy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, well, I, I think, uh, whew. um, <laughs> I would tell myself, don't try to do the one a day schedule. That's not going to work. <laughs> I don't know, buddy, who you were kidding with that, but that one Bible episode a day schedule is not going to last. So that, that would be, that'd be the first thing. But other than that, just, just good luck, man. I don't know. Right. I don't know right. what else I could say. So now after reading the Old Testament, do you, would you say that like like do you think it was um it would be more surprising to the average Judeo Christian or to the average atheist? Uh, just the whole thing like yeah, reading like, it like or the content of it which group do you think it would surprise most if they learned uh, what's actually that, in there? That's an excellent question and I would you know honestly as a cop out I'd kind of say it would be a tie, you know, because I think you'd have a certain number of Christians who had read it just because they were forced to. Right. And you also have some atheists who were big believers and, and went through it and learned about it. But I think the majority of both groups is people who think they know what's in it, but they have not gone through what I've gone through. I mean, they have not gone through the, just the victimization and just really uh, just the, the mind wrenching boredom and, and, and assault just the full on just, just assault on my mind you know they haven't gone through that and you can tell because so many of them say things like now don't get me wrong it's a great work of literature but <laughs> and you know it's those such... motherfuckers have never read past genesis it is so exactly that was something that i exact I, I think i said that exact thing maybe a few years ago when i started getting past the you know the good parts quote unquote good parts <laughs> right. of the bible where it was like, this is not even that. I mean, it really isn't even, oh, it's an interesting piece of literature. It's just ramblings. It's ramblings of idiots that are not even very... One of my favorite things in the Bible is this this thing that sort of is quote-unquote 
poetry or quote unquote imagery. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, having gone through it on your show, where they God will like describe it'll either be a dream or or God will like say, Hey, look over there, tell me what you see, you know, to mm-hmm. somebody. And they'll be like, why, there's a tree, and it has three branches, and the one of the branches is a little discolored, and the then the lead, like, they'll just describe some bullshit nature scene that, like, you can clearly, it's specifically, you know, oh, there's there's numbers involved, oh, there's five plums on that tree, right, one of the plums, uh. they'll just go for hours on this, and then God will say, yeah, well, that plum represents Israel, <laughs> And it's because you're you guys are not doing what I'm saying, so you're not you're falling off the vine. And it's like it's so pointless. It's like it's something they thought back then was poetry or something. But all you did was describe exactly what you're going to say next, but replace like the nouns. You know, instead of Israel, it's plum. (laughs) Instead of this prophet, you know, it's like it's it's pointless. It, It does nothing. Well, right. So it's like it's like you give me the analogy, and then you give me the exact literal interpretation of the analogy. It's like why did I need the fucking analogy then bro precisely and it, and it illuminates nothing it's not in any different language either no. it's, it, it just is exactly that except oh replace the following words with the following other words and, and it's, it's not like, even why? like he can find something natural that exists in the world to make the analogy <laughs> of because it's always got to be some weird shit like i see a lamp that's connected by a tube to a floating <laughs> basket that's got a woman in it you know or some weird yeah, shit like yeah. that yeah, and then and then tied along with that is is the very convincing vision. This is how you know someone is an actual prophet when they describe. Well, you know, God showed Himself to me, and then there was a bull with the head of an eagle and the eyes of a a cat, and then the tail uh-huh. of a you know fucking fish, and they, they just somehow describing an animal that's a million different animals. Everyone back then must have been like, whoa. <laughs> That's got to be God, because because you just described a whole bunch of different things that were had like four heads, you know. It's like, Somehow that's convincing. Uh huh. It's like listening to a kid make up a dream they had. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, actually, that brings me to a really interesting question. So, uh, setting aside the stuff that you were surprised to actually find in the Bible, would you say there's anything that you were like particularly surprised not to find there, other than great literature? <laughs> Yeah, just just content, I guess. <laughs> like <laughs> just Something meaningful happening. <laughs> it shouldn't have been that hard. I mean, I really need to emphasize like I did have very limited Bible education. I knew the major stories, you know, the mm. stuff you see in in whatever, in the movies sometimes or or you know, Noah, all that crap. But it really wouldn't be that hard to think of some stories to put in a holy book if you're God, you know, <laughs> like it, it wouldn't be that all that difficult. You could have some cool narratives. You could have some interesting plot twists. You could have some keeping you in know, mind that he already knew what was going to happen in Harry Potter 2000 <laughs> years ago. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He already had that as an example to work with right. <laughs> while we all wouldn't have back then he did, you know, all right. So now here's a huge question for you. It'd be hard to pick just one, but would you say that you have a, a favorite like what the fuck moment in the Bible? Well, I, yeah, it, I think what's so difficult about this is because I, I would love to think of something different. I've said it so many times, the the repeating of the instructions of the tabernacle. But you know what? Let me let me think of another one. I there was another one that I'm that maybe you can help me with because it's been a while. There was at some point I think some dude ha- was ordered to go collect like a million foreskins. Mm-hmm. And he just went, <laughs> went and just killed a bunch of guys and was like, oh, take that foreskin there and take that foreskin there. And like just collected, I don't know, 100, 200 foreskins yeah, and then actually, presented that. If I'm not mistaken, it was 200 foreskins, but he only needed 100. So he just was having so much fun <laughs> chopping up. For, I believe if I'm not mistaken, that was David um, and he was chopping them off for Saul. And he just, you okay. know, Saul demanded 100 foreskins, and he's like, 100? Shit. I, that's <laughs> well, Tuesday for me, bro. Clearly, Noah, you're a little new to foreskin farming, but when you need 100, <laughs> and I don't blame you for it, you know, a, a lot of people are, well, you know, half of the citizens of this great country of ours are new to foreskin farming <laughs> and the techniques involved. But when you need 100 foreskins, you need to farm 200 uh-huh. dicks. I got like, you, I got you. A lot of them are just, you know, face it, they're not very good, you know. <laughs> They're just not great foreskin. You think Saul is going to take some terrible looking foreskin? Like, that doesn't count. He's Saul, I know Saul. 
he's going to go through them one by one right. to really check off like oh that's a oh yeah. that is a, a lot very of elasticity right on there. this one. tossing him like like uh like he's shooting yeah. paper clips or something yeah right, right. yeah and he that. does the thing like you do to bite a gold coin yeah. you know to see that he's like kind of biting <laughs> each like one of them yeah it tastes kind of like a yeah. funion <laughs> Now, I've got to say, yeah. honestly, my, my vote, for what it's worth, uh, and, and this is early in the Bible, and I haven't found anything more fucked up than this, in my opinion, is the story of the rape-to-death dismembered concubine that gets FedExed around Judea. That that one still blows my fucking mind. Yeah, that's a major... Now, that almost... Maybe he did have access to Game of Thrones when he wrote right? that. <laughs> so maybe that... It, now I'm starting to be convinced. Maybe that was a little bit of... Uh... You know, precognition there. Yeah, just maybe. All right, so now have you have you started on the New Testament yet? Or are you still waiting to crack that open? Not yet. I don't know uh, when when people will be hearing this, but as of now, in re- real time, not podcaster time, mm-hmm. in, in real human being time, <laughs> um, I have not, but I'm very close. A few days now, and I'll crack it open and uh, be reading my first reading about Jesus, I hope. <laughs> right That's what they tell me, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead. And... He shows up pretty right away in that Pre- one. Pretty quick? Okay, so there's not a lot of preamble to that. There's not a lot of wandering uh, uh, stories about nothing first that I have to go through. Um, not just... first, not before okay. Jesus shows up. No, no. Um, maybe maybe a couple afterwards. Oh, man, I don't, I don't like what I'm hearing. But you know what? I'm, oh, dude, the I'm New Testament is awesome. It's okay, yeah. so fucking good. It is so amazingly good. The epistles, holy shit. You thought the minor prophets were repetitive and pointless. Oh, You've man. got so much to look forward to. This, I don't, I don't. Even know. Yeah, so now you're, you're going up, uh, you're going over to the sign and taking down the two days since the last suicidal thought, I, aren't I, I you? I know, I, I, I can't, <laughs> I, I hope you're joking. I, I please, I mean, I'm, if I'm, you are joking, I just want to let your listeners know this is an incredibly awful joke and it's a very cruel <laughs> I mean, I know you have no fucking mercy over there, but I, I, I mean, if it is a joke, at least it's a joke and, you know, I can move on. But if it's not a joke, then I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't, I really don't know how I'm going to make it. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to give you two pieces of ob- objective information that you can verify that are going to okay. make you feel a lot better. Okay. All right. Number one, the new Testament, only a third as long as the old one. Number two, it isn't followed by another Testament. So that right there, I mean, honestly, should be enough true, to get you, true. you know, over that the That does help. But I thought, wait a minute, the Book of Mormon's not the sequel to the... <laughs> now, it, hmm, weird. so, like, do you have any plans, like, after you finish the old, uh, the New Testament? Are you going to do another holy book, or are you just getting the hell out of this? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. People want me to keep going. Um, if they didn't, then I'd, I'd definitely quit. But <laughs> <laughs> Right? Damn <laughs> those not... people. And yeah, it's not money. worth any any the cost. Again, if you could see a picture of me now, it's it's not worth a great toll on my humanity and my <laughs> just my, my life. I think but Tom yeah, said no. it right on cognitive dissonance. He said you're aging like a sitting president. You know? <laughs> I know that was a good one. N- not yeah, a good sign. Um, I it, yeah, exactly. It, but I will be going to a next book. I I think if I had to put my money on it, I would say probably the Quran because uh-huh. why not? You know, I I uh, think I'm gonna do it. But yeah, I plan to continue, and we'll see if if I do the Quran or something. If I if I get more death threats than when I <laughs> did the Bible, I don't know. Maybe it'll be the same. Maybe it'll, no, maybe no one will pay attention to that. I don't know. So now, um, do you have an estimate of when you'll be done with the New Testament? Oh, I have an exact date. Oh, when really? Done with a new... Well, I mean, you... you 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 should know. You schedule out everything for your your holy babble, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll be done yeah. uh, second week of December. Oh well, you'll be done way before me. I will be done October fifth of twenty sixteen. Okay, right on, right. That'll on. be my last episode. All right. Well, if, if if nothing else, at that point, I'll be able to warn you a little bit about the Quran as well. So. Oh, yeah. That's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do the oh, Quran geez. and the Book of Mormon after that. That's that's the plan anyway. Uh, well, I think we need to switch it up. Maybe we should. Okay, maybe I'll do Book of Mormon. Though. I just didn't want. To, I know. I know David Michael's got his thing, so I was trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But you, well, yeah, yeah. He's got that sexy, deep voice too. It'll be hard to, hard to. Yeah. Him, maybe so. I'll just go total. Like I don't want to compete with that. I don't want to do a like a half-assed version of that. So maybe I'll go with like a hello, <laughs> like just a totally different <laughs> stratosphere of voice because I can't. I can't compete with that. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Even if I turn the bass all the way up on my uh, on my mixer, I'm not even close. <laughs> now, as you may or may not know, I happen to be one of the world's foremost experts in the field of vulgar biblical poetry. So if you don't mind, 
I'd like to test your retention a little bit. Oh, wow. So okay. I've got a few trivia questions here, and of course they're in the form of limericks. So I'd like to ask you to fill in the final word on each of these. Okay, but this assumes that I'm actually the same person who read the Bible originally, and I'm not a clone made by someone who blew their head off after reading half of the Bible. I mean, that's a weird assumption that you're taking on, but I'll, okay, I'll go with right. it. Preemptive excuse heard. All right. <laughs> so here's, here's number one. I'm going to throw you an easy one to start. It's your sister-in-law that you're boning, and she's loving it, screaming and moaning. But the, at the end of the deed, should you spill your seed, you'd be committing a sin named for... Conan O'Brien. Oh, you were so close. You were so oh, close. Oh, Conan O'Brien. Sorry, yes, Conan O'Brien. Yeah, exactly. Both yeah. of them are known for splooging all over the place. But uh, <laughs> all right, all right. So you, you almost got the Onan one here. I'm going to give you something a little bit tougher, see if, we can, see if we can really challenge you here. This Nazarene hippie was handsome, but sold out for a generous ransom. And it turned out the honor of first suicide bomber should go to a fella named... Head Danson? I'm going to give you that one because I think it's my shitty rhyming because handsome and ransom don't actually rhyme with Samson. Oh. But we were going for Samson there. Uh, Ted, oh. Ted Danson probably does have some suicide bomber in him, but I'm not willing to make that allegation. Oh, I thought you were trying to yet. tell me that it was Ted Danson, which I would have believed if oh, you said gotcha. that. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. So what, he changed Samson. his name okay. to after he did the blackface thing so that people would still hire him, I guess? <laughs> that would make sense. All right, all right. So we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do something. I feel like I'm not sorry. I feel like I'm not really performing the at the at the way I should, you know, for this. I'm, I'm sorry for that. Well, that's okay. The Bible ages you quite a bit, and as you get older, yeah. this happens more and more. So, uh, that's what, what my wife tells me anyway. All right. So I got I got a, a something a little bit easier for you, guy okay. who may or may not have already come up in the conversation. God knows and comprehends all, down to where each hair on your head's gonna fall. Which begs one to wonder why God would undercut his own choice to make a king out of Paul McCartney. Oh, yes, yes that, that was one. correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Paul McCartney is. I mean, he. I, I, you know, obviously John Lennon. I, you know, I like John a bit better, but he was a king of sorts of of rock. At the at the time, you know, so it fits. I'm I'm trying to. Okay. I can't think of another name that fits any better than Paul McCartney. So I I, I think I can say with confidence I definitely got with this one right. Yeah, so I, score I, one for me. Thank you. Yeah, I, actually, you got it righter than I got it. I had some Saul crap in here, but Paul McCartney definitely. Although I am going to only give you half points for that whole like John Lennon was better crap that you threw down there. That's <laughs> only because Paul McCartney put John Lennon's name on so many of the fucking songs that he wrote. So it's, uh, it's tr point taken. I like them both a lot. So don't don't get me wrong. All right. So I've got one that you almost can't miss right here. So as mm -hmm. one of the more famous stories in the Bible, I've been going for some kind of like, you know, some random shit here. But you'll remember mm -hmm. this one, I'm sure. Josh once taught the prostitute Rahab a trick how to bring down a wall brick by brick. If she wanted his power, she need only bow her head down and wrap her lips round his. <laughs> Uh, well, is it, oh, this, uh, no, this is harder than you think, because there are two terms mm -hmm. that could be used that rhyme for the same thing. So this is, this is difficult, but, uh, prick, I'll go with prick. Oh, I'm sorry. It was trumpet, but very close, oh. very close. I don't get it. Is, tr is this a regional thing? Cause trumpet doesn't mean dick where I <laughs> am from. So I don't get it. Is it? Is that a tr slang term that you have that I don't know? No, but I'll, I, I'm very tempted to tell you that it is, just in case you should ever end up on the East Coast and uh, <laughs> yeah. it could get super awkward. All right, so I've got one final question for you. He says it's okay to hit your kid with a rod, and he impanels a genocide squad. Just ignore the devout, as there can be little doubt that the villain in this book is... Um... Mod Flanders. Oh, wow, I hadn't actually consider that could be a great twist ending you yeah, know if, at the yeah. very end like moses pulls back the the curtain and there's there's maud there that'd be interesting yeah well she died right mm -hmm. so it yeah and then she was really really into god i remember right so that's why i'm trying to, this is final answer final answer mod flanders i'm i'm confident go go ahead <laughs> you don't want to use one of your lifelines or no like regis i am good i'm good it's definitely mod flanders and the survey says who gives a shit? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, no, like I said, I, I, I'm very much looking forward to, um, to listening to you, to you jump into the New Testament because I started listening to the Old Testament 
uh, version of your show long before I actually started reading the Old Testament. So it's actually, I'm really kind of excited about like, you know, listening to you get into the bits that, you know, I've already read and I already know how bad they are and you don't. So it should Let's be a lot of fun. It in. Of course, if anybody would like to listen along as the soul-crushing realization dawns on Thomas that, yes, this book is worse, you can check that out on Thomas in the Bible. You can also find him twice a week on his most excellent Atheistically Speaking podcast, both of which you'll find linked on the show notes for this episode. Is there anywhere else our listeners can check you out, sir? Well, if they wanted to check out just some non-atheism Bible-related stuff, they could check out Comedy Shoeshine, but that's another story altogether. I can't imagine why anybody would want to check out something not Bible-related, but just in <laughs> case you do, we'll have that one linked on the show notes as well. Thanks again for joining us tonight, Thomas. Well, thanks so much for having me on.